Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome everyone to the Sports Spectrum podcast. I am Jason Romano. It is great to have you joining us here on the program today. As always, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at sports underscore spectrum. I want to recommend that you subscribe and download this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, everywhere podcasts are found. Check us out. That's where we are, Sports Spectrum and the Sports Spectrum Podcast. And of course, all of our content can be found at sportspectrum.com, where I want to point you towards our magazine, our quarterly magazine. For just $18, you get an entire year subscription to the Sports Spectrum magazine. The foundation of this ministry of Sports Spectrum started with the magazine over 30 plus years ago and the magazine is still here today and it's a great outreach tool to hand people a nice magazine put it in their hands and have them read stories on sports and faith and you can subscribe today it's a great deal just 18 dollars for an entire year 18 bucks that's all it takes go to sportspectrum.com click that subscribe button and you're in for the Sports Spectrum magazine, our quarterly magazine, plus a couple bonus issues. It's a great deal. Check it out, sportspectrum.com, and subscribe today. Today in the podcast, we look at the life of a baseball coach and his wife. We talked to Billy and Dave Jouse, and I love Billy and Dave Jouse. Gotten to know them now for a few years. Uh, get to meet them every single year at one of the conferences that we put on, a baseball conference. And this past year, we got to see them in Florida, and it's always better. I I say this every time, but it's always better when we can do these interviews in person, and we were able to sit down with Billy and Dave and chat with them. Dave Joust is a Pittsburgh Pirates bench coach. He's been in pro baseball for 30-plus years and has been a coach on the major league level since 1997. He was with the Red Sox, then he was with the Dodgers, then the Baltimore Orioles, a year with the Mets, and he's been with the Pittsburgh Pirates now for six years, got there in 2013, and here we are in 2019 getting ready for the Major League Baseball season in 2019 to begin. Billy is Dave's wife, and she's also accomplished on her part as an author. She wrote a book called Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. Really great book. Highly recommend you pick it up. And this conversation really centered around two things. It centered around Jesus Christ being at the center of their marriage. It centered around God restoring their marriage. And it centered around this conversation of life as a baseball wife and as a baseball coach. It's not an easy one. But with God at the center, Billy and Dave Joust have figured it out. And they share it. They share their story very transparently here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. One of my favorite conversations we've had in a while, and I'm glad we were finally able to bring it to you. We taped this interview back in late November of 2018, but it's not dated by any means, other than the mentioning that Billy and Dave celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary on New Year's Eve 2018. But it's a really great interview. We wanted to hold it and get it out right around baseball time, and the season is upon us the major league baseball season is here so take a listen really fun interview with two tremendous people billy and dave jouse joining us here on the sports spectrum podcast take a listen billy and dave welcome thank you for having us it's great to see you both and i love that we're, we're getting to spend this time together i've known you guys now a couple years and so i want to talk about life as a major league coach and as the in the life of a wife of a major league coach, which I know is is different than the life of a major league coach. So, Dave, before we go there, can you just share how you got your start in baseball, and then really into your coaching journey? Just kind of give us the the Cliff Notes version of that. Well, the Cliff Notes version is most people that don't get an opportunity to to play to play after they're done with their college career or high school career is because they either have bad coaching or they get hurt. Hmm or they're in a place where they don't get seen. Yeah. Um, well, uh, my college coach is, an, is in the Hall of Fame of uh, college coaches. My high school coach is in the Illinois High School Hall of Fame. Yeah. So I got good coaching. Uh, I've never <laughs> been hurt. I never 
and never was athletic enough to get hurt. And I <laughs> played with uh, eight guys that got draft that got signed my senior year in college, hmm. and I didn't get signed. So I think it was complete lack of ability. <laughs> and those who can't can't do teach, and those who can't teach teach PE. Well, that's kind of how I went into coaching. And very early and on, very you were early coaching? on, okay. at, at the age of at the age of twenty two. One day after I took my last at bat in college, I was managing a team in Woodstock, New Brunswick, in the Canadian Senior League. Is I, that even still around? It, it is, is still around. Well, there you it go. is still around, and there were players that were thirty six year old, thirty six years old that had played five years in the minor leagues. There were 16, 18-year-old players that were trying to get signed. So it was a it was a great experience for me, and. Uh, it, it kind of weaned me into what I wanted to do as a coach, and that was to relate to anybody and everybody um, to help them become better baseball players and the teams that we were on to win. Yeah. And so that's where I started. And then I coached in college for six years, coached in the Cape Cod League, and got an opportunity to, to join the Expos in um, after interviewing with Jerry Manuel, who was our field coordinator for the Expos, and he hired me as a Gulf Coast League manager for the 1988 season in Bradenton, Florida. There it is, and that started the pro that career. started the pro career. That's great. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about your coaching journey in a minute, but Billy, can you tell us the story of how you guys met and kind of came together? And, uh-oh, I'm, I'm seeing if, if only the people listening could see their faces when I ask that question. Our kids sort of hate this story. Um, I Bring was it. Yeah, I was a student at the college that David was coaching at, and Let's just say that I did not graduate from that nice Christian school. <laughs> I was asked to leave, and I did. Um, but, uh, you know, we ended up staying together after that. And um, also, I was a good Southern girl, and my husband is a good Chicago boy. And mm-hmm. So my mom said, I sent you to college to find a husband, but not a Yankee one. <laughs> um, so from the beginning, it was all set up for perfection, love forever. Um, but that was a long time ago now. We're actually celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary next month. How about that? Yeah. Congratulations. New Year's Eve will be 30 years. You got married on New Year's Eve. Well, it, it's one of the only days in baseball that there's no baseball game. That's a great point. On the point. night of New Year's Eve, there's no baseball game. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, are really the only four days because we did winter ball. So we would go right. to the Dominican Republic or Venezuela and do winter ball. And so those were the only four days that we knew in baseball that there was no baseball. Wow. And then the other thing is there's always somebody celebrating your anniversary. They just don't know it's your anniversary. <laughs> They're celebrating New Year's Eve. We've celebrated your anniversary exactly. every <laughs> single year. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Talking to Billy and Dave Joust here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Dave, as your coaching career starts to evolve, you begin to do what so many others have done in baseball, and that's move around a lot, end up in different cities and different jobs, and just kind of the, the roller coaster that is being a coach in professional sports, but definitely professional baseball, where the minor league systems, there's so many different cities and so many different places to go. What was that like early on? You say you got to the Expos in 88. You guys have three children now. I'm sure they were all babies back then or maybe not even born yet. So tell us about that journey of when you start with the Expos and just kind of the whirlwind of the different places that, that the Lord took you throughout your career. Well, when you when you coach, you, you go where the organization wants you. Yeah. And uh, the the most important part of coaching, though, is, is relationships and and the trust that you get from players and other coaches and other uh, people in your organization, the trust you have first with them, because until they know you care, until they trust you, it doesn't matter what you know. Yeah. So all the relationships that I was able to um, to form in growing up as a coach, early on in a career, even and now later in a career. Um, has has bode well for me and allowed me to have these journeys and change organizations and and hit the ground running every organization I go with uh, have gone with and I've been I've been trained by a lot of really good people I've been blessed to be with the Montreal Expos early on had so many great men mm. Major league managers, future major league managers. There's 14 of them that were in the minor leagues when I was there. Wow. There were 14 future GMs 
in that organization wow. and that are still going on now. Dave Dombrowski, Dan Duquette, those guys were all in Montreal yeah. at that time. Um, and so that so we as a as a group were able to bond kind of like a family. And then each club that you were on during that during that season, you bonded like a family. And some of them now are coaching against me. Some of them now have sons that are playing against clubs that I have. Delino DeShields' son is playing against us. And, and, and Delino DeShields was with us in Montreal. Yeah. We ended up trading him to, to, uh, to Los Angeles to get Pedro Martinez, who actually Pedro became our boy's best friend when he was pitching for the Red Sox because he had that off the field mentality and love of life that the 10 and six and and four year old or 10, eight and four year old thought they were his best friend. That's amazing. And and he yeah. was yeah. for one hour after a game, they could play like they were, they were exact same age. So it's a great life. So you hear the baseball life, Billy, but what a lot of people don't see is, the wife uh, and and the the other side, the mom trying to raise kids and traveling and going different places, that can't be easy. And I know yesterday we were talking a little bit about there. It was rough. There were some rough patches there. What what about from your perspective? How this is all evolving? In the thirty one years that we've been going into our thirty second year, so the thirty one years complete, we've lived in fifteen different cities and towns in the U S. in Dominican Republic in two different towns in in that country. And we've lived in Caracas, Venezuela. Yeah. Um, there was a time in our life where we were packing up and moving four times a year. Now, that's not moving a whole house. We didn't own furniture. We didn't own a house. Yeah. We had a trunk for the kitchen, a trunk for the boys' toys, and a suitcase for each person. And that's how we moved. Mm. Um, when you're in the middle of it, you really don't think about it being difficult. You just do what you have to do to keep the family together. And that's something that I try to mentor girls in is the most important thing is home is where you all are together. Mm. And we may not have a permanent home at certain points. We may feel like we're always packing up and moving somewhere, but we have a home when we're all together. And so we did that. We had difficult times in our marriage because we grew apart. We were apart for six to eight months a year yeah. at a whole. We'd see each other every now and then. But to really work on a marriage, and I'm growing one way, raising three little boys, and he's growing another in trying to maintain his career and to gain another level in his career. And it really drew us apart. Um, but in saying that, coming back together and really forming our relationship on the foundation of Christ and moving forward in that, it made us grow in a different way in this game. And this game has really made us into who we are now it, with Jesus being the foundation, yeah. but turning our lives over to this game isn't just about a job and getting to a better mm -hmm. level. It's about being in the mission field for Christ. And that's where we feel our entire um, focus and life changed on the game that even though we're going through hard times of moving or changing teams or telling our kids that dad might get fired from the Red Sox and we might be changing teams and our kids saying that's fine but don't go to the Yankees <laughs> that's when they were little and now we have a son that's interviewing with the Yankees for our front office job so it changes in life you know what your focus is of course However, in that, having it as a mission field in what we are hoping to do for Christ in where we are and pouring into the lives of not only the players and their wives and girlfriends, but front office people, yeah. interns, janitors, mm. concession stand workers, the guys that park cars, whoever it may be, we want to pour that love of Christ into them. And yeah. I hope we emulate that. You know, at the gate, when I come into the gate every night and give my ticket, mm. you know, those types of relationships that we form that we're really showing the light of Christ. I love that. Through the job. Dave, how did that change for you throughout the years? Maybe even start with your faith and what it was like and how it evolved and maybe some of the people that impacted your 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 life and, and affected your faith and make it grow to the point where you guys were made, able to make it the center of your life. Well, it, it, without without Christ, it, it would have never grown. That's yeah. and, and I love that Christ worked into men like Jerry Manuel, who did give me my first interview and my and and 
and and my first job in, in with the Expos yeah. in 2010, I actually was his bench coach, mm. and I was hired by him in 1988. Yeah. Um, Felipe Alou, who was I coached third for, and was with him in winter meetings last year, seeing his daughter try to get in a game as a legal counsel after having a law degree, and she was the little girl that uh, little baby girl that was going to Disney. With Disney, with with her her mom and and Billy, with the with the kids while yeah. we were doing it in the Florida State League, so a lot of men impacted me. But it, with the Lord um, knocked on my head and and showed me the hole in my heart when I was um, sacrificing my family, my wife, hmm. for a career that was not fulfilling what He can fulfill. And I thought I was in control. I thought I was better than everybody else in the clubhouse. I thought that uh, my my in, intentions were good enough because they were better than the other man. Um, but I was not um, releasing um, the control that I was trying to take on. The, the person of being better than the next man rather than being good for the Lord. Hmm. Um, and without him... It would not have been a where we are now, where both of us together can uh, share the, what what Christ has done in our lives, and each of us individually yeah. share what He's done in our lives. Because it is our our marriage is, but each of us individually have a testimony, and only because of Him we do. And so this life that I'm in in baseball. I believe I do a lot of the similar behaviors baseball-wise, but the intent of why I do them, why I have the opportunity to do them, is completely different than before yeah. my, my full um, pledge to the Lord that, that He is my Savior. Hmm. Billy, what was that moment? Tell me about... And maybe you saw it with Dave. You know, you kind of talked about when the marriage it was kind of drifted, and then something happened. So, how did you address that? Do you did you get counseling? Did you just open the Bible and say, "We got to figure this out. Let's go turn to the Lord"? Like, was there a few things that were going on? Was it just you saying, "Shape up," or we're, this is a, this is a problem here? We um, got to a point that we were so far apart that we separated. Yeah. And I knew that I was in a place that I never wanted to be a divorced woman. I never planned that. When I got married, it was for life, and my life was falling apart. And I didn't know the answer of what to do, so I went to counseling. Mm. And this woman, who I still to this day do not believe she was a believer, but she kept forging ahead with me in, in what would make me a better person. And she said to me one day, she said, Billy, in your life, is there a time that you felt peace? And I said, yes. And she said, when was that? I said, when I was going to church and I knew God. Hmm. And she said, you need to go back to church. So I did. Yeah. I was looking for any answer that I could. And I went back to church and I started doing a Bible study with a friend. And I really, I, I, we, we, Worked on our marriage. We got back together. We went to winter ball. This was my big sacrifice. I had put my foot down. If you love me, <laughs> you won't go to winter ball. Mm. And so when we were working on our marriage, I said, let's go to winter ball. So that is from leaving the country in October. The season ends. You leave the country. We went to the Dominican Republic. I was in the Dominican Republic two weeks, and I decided I wanted to read the Bible. I had never opened up a Bible by myself before. Right. I had heard it in church. I had heard it from other people, but I wanted to read the Bible. So I bought a Bible on, on the Internet, and yeah. I had it shipped to my house in Boston. Hmm. And the girl that was staying in my house, I had her secretly ship it to the Dominican. Hmm. And I hid the Bible under a bookcase in our apartment because I didn't know how David was going to respond to me right. wanting a relationship with Christ. Hmm. And so we got back to the States. The boys and I started going to a different church, a Bible-based church, and that had worship music instead of you know other music that we had heard before, or a church that we didn't open the Bible. And they started telling Dad that we're going to church. And over time, David would say to me, you're different. What's going on? Something's different. W what is it? Yeah. And I was terrified. <laughs> if he knows that I'm professing my faith in Christ, what is he gonna, how is he going to react? 
is he going to leave me? Sure. And the pastor's wife looked at me one day and she said, do you really think God would do that? And I go, no, I don't think God would, but I think David would. (laughs) And so at some point at the end of that season, that baseball season, the boys said to dad, come to church with us. And so David asked me, when the season's over, can I come to church with you? And I said, please do. Mm -hmm. And that began our journey together in just seeking God with everything we had individually and then in our marriage. How did you see that, Dave, change for you as you, you kind of mentioned to a little bit, mentioned it a little bit and alluded to it, on how you went about being intentional about your job now mm-hmm. and working in baseball. And you say you were in Boston, so I assume that was your time, sometime with your time with the Red Sox, and then you move on and you end up in Los Angeles and Baltimore and the Mets, and now certainly with Pittsburgh. How does that change how you approach your job and, and how you go about, because you have, obviously have a job to do, And your job is to be excellent at what you do when it's not to kind of what I was talking about earlier, you know, wear a cross on your chest and go out and start preaching the Bible that you have Mm -hmm. a job as a coach. But yet you're a a Christian and it's the center of who you are. So how did you change the way that you would go about your job and bringing Christ with you into these positions? Well, it was Billy made a great comment that um, would 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 the Lord want you to lose your marriage by you represent you representing that you've given your life to Christ. Yeah. Would the Lord want me to lose what He has given me talented, the yeah. talent He's given me to coach by me being um, godly and a Christian in my workplace? No, He didn't. Yeah. And He doesn't. He doesn't want anybody. Now, he might have a different plan for you, and he'll show that to you. He'll open that door and throw you in there. But until he does, um, I was able to um, be mentored by the the pastor at that church, uh, the Bible-based church in in Boston. And he and I hit the ground running, and I, for the first time, read the Bible understanding what, um, what Jesus had done. Yeah for my life and for all the time that I grew up in a Christian uh, household and going to church and being a part in my teenage years and being a part of the youth group and this, I heard Jesus in, in one sitting with the pastor in Boston more times than I'd ever heard for 16 years, 17 years in in growing up in in. in Chicago. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. No doubt. (laughs) doubt. It's not that it wasn't professed. Same thing with me. It wasn't that Jesus wasn't professed. I grew up in the Bible Belt. I grew up in North Carolina. Everybody professes Jesus. I had heard it, but I had never opened up my spirit to hear him. And that was the difference. And I, I can say that in David's work, one of the things that I saw a big change in him is when he started working for God, mm. working as if working for God and not for man. Yeah, like Colossians 3.23. Yeah. And that was when that changed, that he started doing his job for the Lord, not for man's acceptance. Mm. So if he's going to go into work and use the gifts that God's given him, he's going to do it with work ethic and strong conviction and working hard for what he knows God is asking him to do. And it was different. It was not for him and his promotion Hmm. and his paycheck. It was for what God was asking. And that was the difference I saw in him, that he really changed in that way. He didn't work any less. He, did, he wasn't weaker. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, when guys give their lives to Christ, they get weak. They, yeah. No. Yeah. Get stronger because Christ is living in you. Yeah. And that is a determination and a commitment and a strength like you've never had. And that's what I saw in him. What about working with a guy like Clint Hurdle now oh. and just seeing a guy who is Good. living out his faith and you see it within the Pirates organization, but not just the Pirates, I'll say, because I've heard about this email that Clint Hurdle sends every single day. Few emails. Yeah, few <laughs> emails. There you go. Yep. And it has a list that is growing and growing of people who want to receive this encouraging note every single day from this man. Tell me about the effect he's had on you and what you've seen and how he goes about 
managing as if he's managing for the Lord and not for man. And and not not if he is, he is yeah. doing that. And uh, so what what my life professes matches what he professes and he wears it. He's the best leader of men I've been with. Mm. And he is a he wears his transparently his faith on his sleeve every day. He knows that the Lord has forgiven him for his past mistakes and he he speaks about that being in what brought him to the Lord and in in our organization for my in my career at this stage of my life I wouldn't want to be anywhere else led by him but also the whole organization our our goal is different than a lot of other goals uh, we're going to go win a world series but our goal is to change the world through baseball. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's too many professional sports teams or too many companies in, 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 that, that do that, yeah. that have that as w their goal is that. Well, that is a, that is a godly goal to have. Yeah. And it invigorates me to do what I do, which is coach, which yeah. is be involved in baseball, which make, make the, allow to assist players to become better players assist our team to be a better team eventually win more yeah. but be a better team that day however the goal is to change men make the, uh, allow them to have an opportunity to be better dads better husbands better brothers better um, sons better friends better community people yeah um, and so it's a uh, and 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 it's it's a it's been a blessing to be with Clint for these eight years uh, yeah I, and I will say to be with an organization that really encourages your husband to be a better man yeah empowers your marriage empowers you as a baseball wife to want to even help the team succeed in a bigger way mm -hmm. you know not that you don't normally want your team to win I mean most of us baseball wives, we don't pray for wins until the playoffs, but we, we are competitive women. We love to see our husbands win. We love to see the fans get into the games. We love that. But to be with an organization that pours into your husband's lives and also into the wives as a group of Pirates wives, and I've been in Bible studies. Baseball Chapel throughout baseball is amazing because they provide Bible studies. They provide Sunday services for the guys. It's great. It is amazing throughout. However, with the Pirates, we have some leaders through Baseball Chapel with Beth and Brad Henderson that take us to another level. Mm. It allows Clint to be Clint as the Christian man, the strong manager, the strong leader. And it also helps us as wives to gather together in a Bible study, to go away together in a spiritual retreat as we did this year. There were nine or ten of us that went away for a weekend. And yeah. we got together and we prayed and we learned about Scripture and we learned about Jesus and we dug deep into the transparency and vulnerability that we needed to dig deep into to yeah. be better wives and better leaders and better Christian women. And so to be in an organization that enhances that in our lives, it just it, it makes it even that much better. You're going to like this question, Billy. So you wrote a book <laughs> called Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. So Dave... How are you making room and doing less so God can do more? <laughs> uh, it, it, that is a walk daily that I have to do. Yeah. Um, I, as as a male, we always we have always felt in my mind that we can control things, hmm. and to control things is you do more. You 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 work your butt off. You do this and this and this um, to be able to. To be free of that allows you actually to do more yeah. through Him, yep. and without w without being able to to release that control, you you are unable to do more because you come up to your own weaknesses and your own roadblocks that you are never going to get through without His help, without His complete help, yeah. and so. Um, I, I believe that I can go through a day and regardless of what happens at the end of the day, if at the end of the day I know that I've honored and glorified him, I'm, I'm successful that day. Yeah. And I leave 
wins and losses so much better than ever before in my life because that is not the end result of me. Yeah. We've talked about identity to the last couple of days here. Um, that he, he has allowed me not to have that identity. My identity had a lot to do with wins and losses and, and what Dave Joust was able to do. N- not for my not for my glory at that time. Sure. But I I I, I did wear that. Yeah. I, the, the player that got better because of me, I, I was I was happy for that. Right. I, because of me. Right, right. And you took the you took the um you took the ownership of that. I, yeah, guess, I did. In a lot of way. I did. Yeah. And and now it, I, and I I work just as hard. I, I work harder than ever because I'm I'm more qualified. I'm I'm in this game longer. I know more. I I've experienced more. So I I I can impart more on them, but only because it it, it glorifies the Lord. Yeah. Let's close with this, Billy. And I was going to ask this before, but you kind of picked it up where I was going to ask. But I'm going to ask it anyways. Fill in the blank on this <clears throat> statement or even this question. Being a baseball wife has taught me mm. blank. So much. <laughs> I mean, there's a list, a long list, that being a baseball wife has uh, taught me courage. Yeah. Adaptability. Selflessness. Um, on and on. I mean, I... I feel like baseball has been the grounds of my faith building, growing, flourishing. It is a a place that our family has grown. Um, Apparently, I I did make the mistake of not making baseball look bad enough because all three of our boys will be employed in some form of baseball by the the end of next year, definitely. Um, (laughs) I should have made baseball look worse, so they went into like business or Wall Street (laughs) or lawyers or something, but but we love this game. This is our family. Mm. I call baseball the big recycle bin because we're all thrown in, shuffled around, and pulled back out, and we're there for one another. Mm. We're family. When we're in those stadiums, we're family. When we walk out of those stadiums, we're family. We stick together. And that has taught me just so much. My faith has grown so much in, in being with these other wives and being in this game. That's great. Billy's book, again, is called Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. And her husband, Dave Joust, Pittsburgh Pirates coach. Dave, Billy, great to talk to you guys. Such great a good time. You. Great conversation. Thanks for joining us here, and we'll catch up with you probably again in a year from now. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And many thanks to Dave and Billy Joust for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. I'm smiling as I say that because I, I just love the conversation that we had. I love the transparency from both Dave and Billy. And I love that God restored their marriage. And now they are taking what they've learned and telling others about the the love of Christ and how he can really truly be in this restoration business in every aspect of our life. And Dave and Billy are just great people. I actually got to see Dave about a month ago or so. It was right at the beginning of spring training in Clearwater, Florida at the end of February. And I went over to the Pirates and Phillies game with my brother Damien, and we got to hang out and watch the game, and I shot uh, Dave a text and gave him a little wave down by the dugout, and he called me over, and it was just a really neat time catching up with him, and he even gave me a baseball, spring training baseball that I'm holding in my hand right now, and Dave is seriously one of the nicest people I've ever met, not just the nicest people in sports, but a really tremendous guy, and his wife, Billy, is a sweetheart. She's so Uh, energetic and fun and outgoing. And her book is really making a dent in the industry as well. So make sure you check out Billy Jouse's new book, Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. It's a tremendous read. Check it out. It's on Amazon and everywhere you can get books. Again, Billy Jouse is the author, Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. Many thanks to Billy and Dave Jouse for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. We also want to thank you for listening. We really do appreciate you checking us out. And if you like what you heard, take a screenshot, tweet it out, Facebook, tag Billy, uh, tag the Pirates, let us know, tag Sports Spectrum and myself, and let us know that you heard this interview. Uh, I think it's one to share with uh, husbands, if you're listening, share this one with your wives. I think this is a really good one to learn uh, some tricks of the trade and some things that Billy and Dave have instilled into their life that we can all use and instill into our life as well check us out on social media 
Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at sports underscore spectrum. You can also reach us on our website where all of our content is found at sportspectrum.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time with a brand new episode of the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Have a great rest of your day.